Anyways, traders, welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast, uh, training thousands of the world's traders. Uh, do remember to try my live room at tradingopen.com at just $47, blondes and beer not included. I'm a real money trader with lots of P&L proof from real money trading accounts, and hopefully I can help you stay on top of things the right way. I do a lot of real trading because that's my mission in life is to test out patterns to see what works. So here we are. Welcome to Trading Week Ahead. All information is for educational use only. I like wearing Brioni suits. They're really comfortable. My tailor told me it was because it has multiple panels and so a Brioni suit feels like you're wearing a polo shirt, which is great, very light. Anyway, let's take a look at our market and see where things are headed. Market's been up and down and sideways a couple of weekdays yesterday and Thursday, but nothing real strong. The institutional buying and selling isn't going to come in until we break the 30-30 in the S&P on the upside, or we lose the 50 and the 100 SMA down near the 2940. You know, the market is very high-frequency trading algorithm driven, and professional traders and the P, the quants, the quantitative guys who and ladies who do the programming for HFT. Uh, the, the trades that, how to say, the systems in place that move the most money in the, the markets only activate up at breakouts or breakdowns above resistance or below support. So that's why we've had so much choppiness this market. Like last week, it was really some relatively quiet days. We had some quiet days back here, some relatively strong selling, some up and down mix here. And last week was kind of like, a bag of mixed nuts. You got a little bit of something, a little bit of buying, a little bit of selling, but we don't have strong directional volatility one way or the other. So what you want to do is make winning trades by focusing on the strongest rock star charts out there. Some good examples, one that my swing, my small cap scans members got, I believe was this one, uh, ENIA. What I like to do is go through a handful of three, four, five, maybe 10 charts each morning, each Saturday to give you a heads up on the type of charts that may be good candidates to keep on your personal watch list in case they break out this upcoming week ahead. So instead of talking about broad sectors, I talk about technicals. We always want to be on the lookout for large green candles up at the right side of a 90-day candlestick chart. That's critically important for swing trades. Uh, I'm looking to go long this guy if he breaks over, say, 10.2. Now, for those of you who are day traders, a good example of a winning chart from yesterday was this Guild and Activewear in I made the long call for my members at 24.4. I made the call back when it was down here, pre-market. I said, in market, wouldn't go long if it breaks over 24.4. And live, in real time, as it got close to the 26, I said, sell it all now, right? To paper trading, sell it all right there, right under the whole number. Now, so often you'll find that whole numbers provide support and resistance. That's one reason why my approach is superior to those guys who are trying to hoodwink people into trading $3 biotech stocks and scalping thousands of shares and making ridiculous income claims. The attorney generals will be looking into them shortly, or already are actually, so I'm not worried about my competitors in the small cap space. They're going downtown, ha ha ha. As asked the regulatory compliance agents. So the point is, uh, what you want to do is focus on charts that you can use strategies that make sense, right? So, for example, we know that whole number resistance, the top of the cup is there. It's right there. So I said to go long here, and I always say to sell at the 0.8 or the 0.9 right below a whole number resistance. So, And this was my favorite chart pick of the day yesterday from my live room members, uh, hundreds of folks. Uh, you know that that's where I spotted the best chart at 9 o'clock or at 8.45, I guess I logged in. So when you're looking for strong charts, make sure that they've got good volatility directionally. KB Holmes, another good example of a consistent chart. You want what I call our honest charts that are consistent, not the pop and drop. Uh, even though we nailed the call on SES a couple of days ago for our members uh, to the tune of like 12 points, that thing skyrocketed up, right, SES? That was quite the chart. But for most of you, you know, for bread and butter swing or day trading, 
you want consistency because you want to make money and you want to have more entry and exit strategies that are you know that make sense with charts that are honest good clean breakout continuation charts and then you know get out at the first sign of trouble now one strategy that i teach is to buy for swing trades right above a decade value like a 31 or 32 and sell up near where 38 39 and the reason i teach that is because as illustrated in this tsm winning chart a nice 45 degree angle breakout and it ran into overhead resistance right near that 50. So what I will do in my swing trades, and I hope that you do this too, is as you get close to a multiple of 10 price action uh, chart, tighten up your trailing stop or just go to cash uh, at once it reaches a, a nine value, something near nine, like a 49. Or if you're trading a cheap stock, you know, a 19 or a 29 or 39. So that's another good strategy. We have a shooting star, it's the left part of a bearish engulfing, at a decade value, and so we're starting to crack and drop. Now, if you're along TSM, and let's say you, you were busy yesterday and you didn't see the, the bearish engulfing that occurred on Wednesday and Thursday, which is certainly possible, where would you personally trail a stop? Let's say you bought TSM, let's, I, don't, I can't recall my alert offhand, but let's say it alerted, I wanna say 44 and a half. Anyway, let's say you bought 44 and a half and now we're up to the 50 and it looks distressed. You have to be a man or a woman of action if you're going to make it as a trader. If you're going to be indecisive, that's going to kill you or get, be frustrating at least. You have to decisively exit. Where would you exit? I'm curious. This is the audience interaction portion of today's event where one of many where I encourage you to type in a trailing stop value. You know, let's say you're in, yeah, say, 500 shares and you're trying to lock in a, a nice healthy multi-point profit. Where would you trail a stop on an open long position in Taiwan Semiconductor? See, unlike other educators, I've got a background in professional training and development and had been an adjunct faculty teaching at a private university. So I like to do a lot of audience interaction, like I do in my live seminars or my money show appearances or whatnot. I would say turn to the trader next to you and you guys figure out where, guys and ladies would figure out where would you trail a stop. A lot of answers, 48.9, stop under 49, 48.9, 49, 48.5, 49, 80, stop at 45. No, not 45. But thanks anyway for trying, Bill. That's too far down. 49 and a quarter, 49, 49.60, 48.80, out already. Yeah, good answer, John. That's the right answer. You should be out already. You should have been out back here at 49. But if you're still in, let's say you're on vacation and you come back, hey, what's going on? Somewhere in this little window of 48.50 to a loss of the 49 is the, the and it may well gap down Monday, right? So uh, 48.50 would be the absolute lowest trailing stop, which is only around 60 cents under the low of yesterday. So if you're in at say 44 and a half, selling at 48 and a half is fine. That's a four point win and that's good. As a trader, the more you trade, and you know, I've done over 7,000 trades this year alone, real money trades with P&L proof, what you'll find is that it's you don't have to be as active as I am, but like my colleague Tom Sosnov from Tasty Works and Tasty Trades says, trade small, trade often, and that makes perfect sense. You have no reason not to trade small, trade often now with zero commissions at a lot of the big brokerages. So you can experiment and test out your favorite trading idea with small share size. Speaking of which, uh, uh, this is a reviewer, uh, Emmett, from uh, Trading Schools, I like this guy. Uh, he, he suggested, and I like his idea about doing single share trades. And I think that's brilliant because uh, you can trade a single, if you have a bright, shiny new trading idea, or if you're new to trading, or you, you've been beaten by the markets and you lost a lot of money and you're trying to bounce back, I've been there, done that. Uh, it's good to you know, do something like small share trades. One or two shares is fine because you get the thrill of, uh, thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat without a commission. So you can trade a single share or five or 10 or whatever in and out as much as you want with you know close to zero commission cost and a very low price. So if you have a bright new shiny idea, like my ETF arbitrage approach, I love it because I can do like single share trades or five or 10 or 20 shares or whatnot. I usually do 20 as my minimum shares uh, and 50 to 100 is where I start to average 
with my swing trades, and then I scale into the ones that work out. And I take small stops, not big stops, and the ones that don't work out. So I have really good patterns here to work with. But thanks to the audience. Ameritrade, I uh, told you guys here a couple weeks ago it'd be a good bounce play, and it sure enough has been. I bought on this day, but I sold too soon. I sold too early right there, so I should have been more patient. But patience is not my middle name. How many of you are impatient? If, you, if you're like me and you're not a very patient person, the, the fix for that as a trader is don't over trade, uh, but trade selectively with the strongest charts. There's always gonna be some, a handful of rock star charts with huge, epic, iconic breakouts or gaps or something worth trading. Uh, trade small size uh, and trade more frequently. Or like I say, trade wide, not deep. You should never, ever, ever be trading thousands of shares. And you should never, ever be learning from, especially these newbie kids who are trading SIM accounts overseas and pretending they're really trading when they're not, uh, trading, making phony performance claims of, I made you know tens of thousands of dollars in a few days. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Don't trade thousands of shares, ever. You know, it's much smarter to, at least my humble opinion is, what I found that my biggest winning years, where I made the most money, is a lot of trades with small size. And that gives me you know, like the law of large numbers. You get a lot of shots, a lot of darts at the market, trading rock star charts only, where you've got a clearly defined edge or an advantage, right? Charts, you know, that have consistency, right? Or extremes. Right, and that's where I called the long yesterday pre-market. I said to go long in this hit in market at 24.4. That was my favorite number one pick. And that was my best, uh, best. I think, you no, know, the SE, SES was my best pick of the week. This is second best. It was a good alert from 24.40, the buy. And live in real time, I said we want to go to cash once it got to the in the top of the cup there at 20, just under 26. So we didn't get the bottom. We didn't get the top. We got the couple of points here, or a point and a half in the middle, going from 24.4 up to the 20, the high 25s or 25.8. So plain outlier charts is especially valid and valuable in what's otherwise a relatively troublesome market. You know, it's fun to make money as a trader. It's more fun when you can do that more frequently. But the main thing is to have a plan Make sure you journal your trades uh, briefly in a notepad file or something. You know, what was the, the time of day? I used to keep two big binders and I even I'd go to, you know, one of the office supply stores, uh, I think Office Depot or something and get a couple of green binders and a couple of red binders and print out charts of my winning trades and put those in the green binders and print out all the charts of the stop losses and put those in the red binders and I would obsess over you know, the two different sets of the contrast between the winners and the stops, and then look you know, intelligently, what could I have done to stop doing the stops and amplify and do more of the wins? That's why I like to trade midweek opens. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings tend to be the best time of week to trade. Also with the strongest charts that have best directional volatility with good, good motion or good movement. So, when the market's up or down and up and it's down and up and down and up and down and up and up and down and down and up and down and up, it's a schizophrenic headline driven market that is looking at things other than typical valuation models like, you know, PE ratios and sales and profits and earnings and EBITDA and all that kind of stuff. It's much, very much a sensitive on the edge of, uh, kind of on the edge of the razor market condition. Right, Bob, I agree. Patience of virtue, not a vice. Right, Mira, saying I was impatient. Trading taught me a good lesson to be more patient. What I found is I indulge my impatience by scaling. Okay, that's what I do. It's only a thousand trades. So I scale in. So it's not all in or all out. So if I put on a trade of, say, 100 shares uh, and it doesn't work out or it starts to go against me, I don't close the entire position. I'll scale out a half of it, say 50 shares. And if the remaining 50 keeps going down, okay, I'll take a bigger stop than I would if I had closed the whole thing. But frequently, you'll find that very, very often, and you have my word on this, I, I'm a professional, I know this stuff, uh, over 7,000 trades this year, uh, and tens of thousands over the last uh, 20 years 
uh, trading uh, day, mostly day trading, but also swing trades, is that you'll get stopped out frequently. And how many of you have had the frustration effect of you've been directionally correct, but you still got stopped out? Is that something I've asked that before? But if you don't position size and scale, you'll die a death of a thousand cuts. And what you'll do is get stopped out frequently. And sometimes uh, you'll trade charts that you shouldn't have been trading in the first place. But like a good detective, like Hercule Poirot in Murder on the Orient Express, which I'm rewatching, kind of slow for my taste, but uh, anyway, like a good detective or Sherlock Holmes with a magnifying glass, uh, you're trying to find the best charts that make sense to trade in our current markets that have good directional volatility and more importantly, look to be attractive to new buyers. Ask yourself, if you had to make the case, let's say you're uh, you know, a, you know, a floor trader on one of the big exchanges and you have to make the case for your, uh, your supervisor, your supervisory trader, uh, the, the trading floor manager, uh, you've got to have a reason to justify the trade. You always have to have a good, smart, intelligent reason to put on a good trade. And what you'll find, at least my experience has been, and your, my, your experience might be similar, is you really want to find intelligent charts that have consistency that are likely to make you money. Intelligent, not pop and drop hazardous biotech $3 momentum day trading stocks. That's just going to blow up your account. That's gambling. It's like trading penny stocks. Uh, maybe, maybe back in the day, someone could have shorted penny stocks, but you're just going to get killed trying to play cheap, horrible, inconsistent charts. You need consistent charts. You need directional volatility, and you need the decision-making skills to put on your entries and exits with timing that makes sense and captures profit and sweeps profit into your account uh, you know, before you get stopped out or before what's frustrating is if it goes up, let's say you buy it, it goes up, and then you wait too long and it comes right back down to what you got in at, that's, that's not good trading. Trading is like uh, buying wholesale and selling retail. So you want to buy at a price point that's favorable. Say a large candle breakout above a 200 SMA is a favorite. Let's say you got in here, sweat dry balling the charts, or use the ATR indicator. You can see if the average true range is increasing or decreasing or cycling up and down. Uh, but yeah, you can use the ATR. That's a smart volatility-based stop management method. And that makes sense. A little more sophisticated, but I, I'm with you. I understand perfectly what you're saying. And yeah, if you... That's why I love candlestick charts because they show you the ATR kind of visually. You can see what the average range kind of sort of looks like on a chart. And if you have an exceptionally strong buying candle that beats the averages, like this ENIA chart does, hint, uh, maybe worth a shot somewhere north of 10. If the average candle height is about yay tall, kind of like a, a small cup of, small cup of coffee. And then all of a sudden you get a venti or a, I forgot the other name, but grande or whatever, the, the big, big ass cup of coffee, large tall candle, especially when accompanied by large volume, that tells you you've likely got an institutional buy order that's been initiated that's likely to uh, produce a good trade moving forward. So stay on top of this stuff. Anyway, what else? Oh, thanks, Guillermo, about KBH. Yeah, it was a good pick. Yeah, home builders and energy. I say, hey, Bill, can I recommend swing scans versus trading open for early stage traders? They cost about the same, and you get a lot more hours of training with me with the live room. So if, if your schedule permits, uh, you know, and, and again, the live room is mainly, it's like 80% day trades, 20% swing trades. That's the signature service, and it's only 97 a month. Normally, it's 200 but for now, it's still just half price of 97 So try the, the live room and see what you think. Forecast for the week ahead. Do be sure to follow. I'm keen to scale into, I'm getting kind of leery of TVIX because the VIX has not been behaving itself. And the VIX is like many of the talking heads said, you know, it's down here you know, 13 to 15. It's way oversold it. With all the volatility we've seen lately, most of us who've been trading for any length of time would expect a VIX over 20 by now. But the VIX instruments and the TVIX is still disappointingly stay down. So we'll see if they bounce. But as triple Q, visually you compare the most recent couple of days here. Look at that, like an eye test. Small followed by large whole row body candle off of a 30th. So I bought a little bit to add to my swing trade. 
yesterday. Uh, and I'll continue to scale in every point on the way up because I've got a I've got to run right now because I've got swing scans coming up. But with this kind of volatility profile, what I'd like to see is volume over say 25 million. That would be a good volume pivot signal that buyers are in. It's still in a downtrend. It still looks pretty horrible. But if it bounces, and especially if it's able to regain the 50 and the 100 SMA and hold over at this time, uh, that would be great. The main significant primary R1 level is 38, which is the 200 SMA. Kind of a parting thought for those of you. I don't know. How many of you use moving averages? It's one of those things where the tighter the moving average signal you use, the more stops you're going to take because it's less strong of a signal. Your 200 SMA is the strongest one. Your 50, frequently you'll see it's like a false breakout above the 50 and then crash back down. False breakout above the 100 and it really crashed down. False breakout above the 50 and the 100 and it continued to grind down. But if it gets over the 200, we may be good for something. So I'm not going to start putting on any kind of large size, you know, 500, 800 shares in S triple Q until it does a move over the 200 SMA. So don't be, my, my point is, don't be too keen on over trading uh, 50 SMA breakouts. 50 SMAs are good to be aware of, but they don't provide enough juice or enough signal strength to put on a large trade, especially on a bounce or a pivot play. You really want to wait patiently and may, you know, during a big market sell off, this guy will spike up to 50, but you want to wait till it gets over the 200 SMA before putting on the trade. So you're right, Eric. Yeah, you're exactly right. Moving average plus candlestick patterns are what you want to use. Exactly right. I really got to run because I got swing. I got much better charts for my swing scans members. So if you're not yet a member of one of my services, you, know, you have my word, the training's worth it. You get, you know, it's an hour and a half a day for two weeks. So how is that? Seven, that's 15 hours of training. Uh, with me, I'm a professional uh, for only 47 bucks, and it's non-recurring. You can use either PayPal or uh, the One Shopping Cart link, and that's at tradingtheopen.com. So do join me. We're likely to have a hot week next week, so I hope that you all do well in your trades and you can join me in the live room experience. And uh, and whether or not you join me in the room, I hope you you know learn something from my technical analysis and my trading tips and lessons learned and helps put you on the road. Well, I delete close that okay anyway helps make you win, make bigger winning trades more often and get a little more consistency to your approach right so that you're uh, building charts and building positions that actually work out and the critical thing in the live room that you'll learn is managing exits and that's a much overlooked skill we use tape reading and the one minute candlestick charts to identify exit signals along with our western technicals like whole numbers support resistance previous days, open, high, low, close, uh, and current open range breakouts. So a lot of good professionalism that I cover and have for 20 years at Trading the Open. We're celebrating our 20th year. We celebrated August, our 20th year anniversary in the live room. So join lots of folks from around the world and take care. Best wishes for success. Hey, Sir yeah, it's uh, 47 for two weeks. Hey, thanks, Long, appreciate it. Thank you for your presentation. Best education. Thanks, Guillermo. Good to see learning new things. All right. Well, let's wrap. I've got swing scans coming up. Have a great weekend out there, folks, and make it a good one. Trade smart. Trade often. Make it work. And we've got zero commissions. So with zero commissions, I highly encourage you to allocate some of the, not, you don't have to spend all the money that you spend on commissions, but allocate some of it towards educating uh, yourself, uh, hopefully with people like myself and my colleagues that we really try and keep you on the right side of your trades, uh, keep you out of trouble and no risky pop and drop, small cap under $10, thinly traded. I do cover under $10 stocks in the live room, but only ones with really big volume and really choice chart patterns like SES was a couple of days ago. But for the most part, we like charts in the live room for stocks and ETFs around 20 or 30 bucks a share. That's what I like to trade, 20, 30, up to 40 a share. So anyway, I'll see you in the live room. And uh, until next time, take care. 
Bye for now.